Hello and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today to talk to you about strings and crumbs. Specifically today we're going to deal with my favorite crumb block. Now these are the crumbs I have left. Now I have put a PDF pattern and it's a free pattern below into the description, the show notes. And we're hoping you're going to have a lot of fun with this. I have a lot of crumbs because I went through my string and crumb bin and I sorted all my strings into co to color families and then I pulled out as we were going through this crumbs. Well, I don't know. I I don't know if you can see this, but I, I eat a lot of granola bars. So this is two granola bar boxes full of crumbs that I've got to work with now that I have left because I've already done a bunch of crumb quilting. So today, come a little closer, I'll show you how to do, is it a fish or is it a bird? Okay, so this pattern you're going to find in the show notes or the description below as a PDF. And it's a free pattern, but it's called, is it a bird or a fish? And it's unfinished at two and a half inches square and finished at two inches square. Now that sounds like really small little paper piecing things to do, but... Um, the coloring chart, if you want to make it look like a bird, it's just one and five are colored and the rest are background color. If you want to look like a fish, one, five, and six are colored and the rest are background. So I've just got a few of the crumbs and I did pull out, I thought was a good background because I'm going to make fish because I've made a lot of birds and I'll show you the box of birds I made. These are the box of birds I made. And I sh I'm going to show you what I make with these blocks. But my crumbs, if, if I'm going to do that much time sewing a crumb block together, I want a serious wow factor. And I just, the, the look of a crumb block sometimes just doesn't do it for me. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's too disorganized or I don't know. But anyways, I, this is how I manage my crumbs. Now we're going to start with two little pieces two little blocks. You're going to print this off and I'm just going to do two at a time because it's quicker. I'm going to change the foot out of my machine so that we have just a straight stitch and get rid of the quarter inch. Now because it's paper piecing, now there's people that believe that you must have a quarter inch ruler and a little piece of plastic or something to you know turn your paper and you know what I'm going to show you both methods on how to use this correctly, but I'm also going to show you a quick, fast way of doing it. So let's get started on this. So I'm going to make fish. So that means two, three, and four are going to be my background blue because they are fish. They're in the water. And these are going to all end up being my fish, all these crazy little crumbs. So we sometimes we have a lot of fun with these. So I'm going to take... Just a piece like this. I'm just going to cut it off. Yes, there's a lot of selvage, but it'll be fine. And I'm just going to cut it into an oversized triangle to get two and... Uh, well, I should probably do like three, four, like a couple of them. Get a couple of them done. There. That's probably all the background pieces I'm going to need. So I'm just going to run through here. There. And just rough trim. Now th these are oversized. But this is also stuff people would throw away, right? So, you know, don't get too too wound up on what you're doing here. So I'm going to make the fish tail on one. I'm going to make it green. So I'm going to line these up good side to good side. And I want the green to go up against the one. Now when you look up at the light on this, you can see that I've lined up my edges, right? So you can see the edge on one side and the other side are now past both sides. And you've got a reasonably good quarter inch seam. So I'm just going to quickly run this through the sewing machine. And I'm going to do the next one right away. And that one's going to be a brown tail and a blue background. So I'm just going to put them together side by side, right? And it really doesn't matter where 
that you've got, you've got to have at least a quarter inch seam or well you can get away with what Ricky Tim says you can get away with an eighth so you see now I'm I'm past that if you can continue drawing that line out you'll see I'm past that quarter inch so I'm just gonna quickly run this one too so we've got most of the tail done now I'm going to finger press open yes I love my finger pressing there and I'm just I'm going to show you how to do the cutting with the add a quarter ruler so I'm going to flip it to this side I'm going to do my three first I might as well while I'm here I might as well cut both sides and I put this down and I line up my edge and I just trim off that little bit that's hanging out. Now that's going to give me a guide for my next seam. But since I'm here, I might as well do the other side. So that would be piece four. So I'm just going to pull this back. And you shorten your stitch length too when you're doing paper piecing. You know, that helps. It makes it easier for the, the paper to come off. So this is now what it looks like on the back. And one of the funny things about paper piecing, foundation paper piecing, it never looks really great until all of the, all of the stuff has been trimmed. It never looks like anything. So with this, I'm going to make sure, oh, that's four. Oh, we want to do three. So in order to do three, we have to go, oh, we'll do four first. Okay, so here's four. We'll do four first. It doesn't matter. Now, I've, I've got selvage here, so I want to make sure that selvage is not in the block. So when I tip this up to the light, I can see where that line is here. That, And I, I want that selvage to be past my cutting line. So now, I'm just going to open up my foot. And... Just like that. Now, if you're just going to use a quick method, because you don't have to have all that precision, you just would hold this up to the light and you can see the shadow. And from that shadow, you can see where to cut it. And because your pieces are all oversized, you know, you're usually okay just to trim them. So, um, let me get just a little bit bigger. And you can just rough cut them out like that. And when you look at the light, you can see that you still have a quarter inch seam, right? So now, I'm going to start with four, making sure the selvage is away from that, out of the block. Okay. It's, um, they're both going to look the same. Why have I got, why don't I have another piece? Oh, I must have shortcut myself one. I didn't cut one big enough. Okay. So now we're just adding three. We lined it up on the back. And we go like a good quarter inch past where we need to be. And I'm, uh, just lost a blue piece. So we will make another blue piece. Just by rough cutting there. And we're just going to lay this one down on that area, right? And I flip it over. No pins. No, no crazy magic. There. Now, we're going to put the body of the fish right in. And, oh yeah, this is the one we were, we were trimming the way they say you're supposed to trim it, like this. Now we're going to do a long piece across. There. Uh-oh, there we go. There. And you just pull that open and so it's lying flat. And then you put your, your add a quarter ruler down, just like so, where you've got your quarter inch. 
and you trim. Very simple little trim. And we're going to make a, I don't know, an orange body, I guess. Let's make an orange body. And we just roughly cut, cut the piece that we're going to be working with. This is a really cute African print. And we're just going to run this all the way along across the block. Okay, it's a little oversized, but that's okay. I'm gonna finger press the other one. And okay, we'll 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 do it this way. Because I know we're gonna confuse people. But all you have to do is really rough trim it. So you've got kind of a quarter of an inch, just because you need some ideas to where to lay it down, right? Your next piece. And this one we're going to make a red body or a red and black body. Oh. So I'm going to lay this piece from there to there and I'm going to trim this off because I don't need all this extra on the quilt block. So it's I just line it across, right? Flip it over, hold on to it, make sure it doesn't flip. Your seams open. Now I did check beforehand to make sure that these were all big enough. Now with this fish, it does actually go covers right to the end, right? But I don't want that. I have a cute little red piece I want to use, so I'm going to just roll this back just like this. Okay, put my red in the middle, pretty side to pretty side. Make sure it covers, yes it does. Run it through. Sometimes when you pin on small foundation paper piecing like this, you actually distort the block, right? Because a pin going into uh, fabric and paper will curve the block. So you don't, you might not want that to happen. So we just want this like so. I'm just about done here. Okay. Now I want a little orange face, so I'm putting the orange bit like this and running it through. Now I have two of them done. So now. So now I'm going to finger press and make sure I'm cutting along when I trim it down, right? I want to make sure I'm doing the cut line, not the, the seam line, right? So I'm just going to hold it like this, just like very quick little trim. Yeah, these are real easy to make and the wow factor is really high. Like when you make a whole bunch of these little fish or the little birds, like I, I made a bunch of bird blocks here. I'll show you those when we're done. But there's your little fish. And here we'll do the trim, the, trim up the other one here right away. When you do these like this because you're using all your smaller crumbs, the wow factor is there. I and mean, people look at that and they go, oh my gosh. And they're not thinking you're paper piecing. Because paper piecing, oops, let's get that one finger pressed out of the way before we trim it. There we go. Because when you're paper piecing, you get perfect results. So they think you're a master quilter and you see how easy this is. This is not, you know, a difficult task. I mean, some people, they press with an iron. They make sure they press with an iron. But for little blocks like this, you know, little scrap blocks like this. You, you've got two cute little fish now, you know, swimming in a, you know, in a fish school and you're good to go. So let me show you what else I've got. Okay, so you've seen the little fish, right? And basically it's uh, based on background and color. And I've showed you my huge box of birds, right? And you can see that I've got lots of little birds. 
but I want to show and both both those blocks were made with this pattern that you'll find in the PDF It'll, it's a PDF that you'll find in the description notes or the show notes below but I want to show you what I do with them because this is where I my crumb blocks get the wow factor what I do is I sew them together like this and then I put an uh, outer sashing on them. Now this outer sashing has got little blue bits. Well, when you put blue bit to blue bit bit, you are actually making little friendship stars that go in between the, the fish or the birds in this case. You're making little friendship stars going through. And it's just beautiful little scrappy way of doing something. Now what I'll do with these here, because I've got so many of them, and I do have a box of, you know, bird blocks that are all ready to go. I will continue making more of them. And I'll just use this as a leader and your project for a while until the box is emptied, making these blocks. Now, I would, I'm going to show you how to finish making these blocks. So you'll see from here, you know, what you can do with them. The fish blocks, um, what I do with these is I can just sew four of them together or sew a uh, random blue strip in between just to give somewhere for all the seams to lie so the block lies really flat because you are dealing with a lot of little crumbs, right? A lot of little seams are in here. You've got like six little pieces of fabric seams in this, you know, two and a half inch unfinished square, right? So you need somewhere where everything can lie flat. So. But this is what I do, and I have a lot of fun with these. I have lots more ideas, so I'll show you those ideas in the weeks to come, both with using strings and with using crumbs. So I hope you come back. I hope you have a fabulous week ahead, and I have enjoyed spending my time with you today. So goodbye. Have a great one. Bye. Thank you for watching our video today. We are just overjoyed with how our channel has grown. And um, we would like you to share, like, and subscribe these videos with your friends and other, other people. Uh, this is one of the quilts that we might are considering at, at this time to do a sew along for. It is um, a crazy original scrappy design that was made with too much co coffee and too many granola bars and it's a lot of fun to do and it, it is a really good scrap buster so share like subscribe tell your friends about us uh our plan for 2022 is two different so longs for sure and two different case studies and we're gonna do uh try and do a thing on uh grouping on uh, strings and crumbs and then another one on curves so we've got rather an ambitious 2022 planned for you here. So, like I say, I hope you come back. Have a great week ahead, and we'll talk to you later. Bye!